And I think the exciting promise of AI for me <laughs> is it's less about like how many billion lines of code we generate a day or whatever as a human species, but more like how many well-tuned, not held together with bailing wire, really high quality software systems are we maintaining as the human race? Mm. Um, and when, you know, like I did this pull request over the holidays, it was like 30,000 lines and nearly killed me. And then it inspired like something that I hope we're going to be shipping in a couple of weeks, uh, doing, you know, an AI feature basically like, but yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the effort involved ha that has traditionally been involved in any sc code base that meets the real world at scale is, has been too much. It's been too much to keep it to yeah. really keep things clean, you know, anyway. No, I think that's a really now. good way of looking at it because my entire software career, I have been selling the idea of slowing down to go faster and spending the extra time and the extra money to design it right, to test it right, to do all of the rigorous things that slow you down and cost more money. And it's a very hard sell. However, what if the cost of that was approaching zero, right? Right. Like what if the cost of your if your big rewrite or your big refactor refactor was like fifteen minutes? Like, why wouldn't you totally. just go fix it? You don't have I to know, talk to I anybody. Just do it. I spent like two freaking you know two weeks on and off and like a very intensive week, kind of right around New Year's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like oh my god. Yeah, I pulled an all nighter on New Year's Day because I told myself like I'm not gonna fuck. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. Oops, I'm not gonna blow my time box on this. Right. <laughs> oh, I almost got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I told myself, I'm not going to blow my time backs on this. And yeah, and I, I got it compiling at least, right? This like change to this, you know, core part of the GPI API, you know, that's just called like thousands and thousands of times all over the system. Uh -huh. But it was like wrong, you know, it wasn't <laughs> right. But I hadn't realized it wasn't right when we upgraded from GPI sure. 1 to GPI 2. But it's like, okay, now that I've seen it though, I have two choices. I could accept it or and it's in the code base forever <laughs> uh, or I can fix it and like work my tail off fixing. Um, and it's cool now that I think like, you know, and I think we're still getting there to be, to be real. Sure. We're still getting there. But like the promise of AI, I think for me is having this third choice of like, I fix it and the horrible part of fixing it is actually fast. Right. Yeah. There's something that has happened with um, access to all the things. I'm not going to name them all. We all know what they're called. Is that the, the trivial yet mundane things we would do are somehow made a little easy, like an email response. I did this. Today, I was like, I almost procrastinated on two different emails today. And this is, this is not coding. This is just very simple everyday things. And I'm like, I have in my brain a version of what I want to say, but I don't have the right, I don't have it framed well. I'm like, these, this is the facts. Here's bullet points. Here's what they said. Here's what I want to say. Make it happen. And then out it comes. I'm like, that's awesome. Copy and paste. Move along. Instead of procrastinating, doing my thing, coming back an hour later. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's these little tiny things that we, that right. are now solved so simply that we used to just not do because they were like either arduous or just daunting or time cognitive. Consuming. Like, yeah. huh? Time consuming, right? I yeah, mean, even, yeah, time consuming, but even like from a, a cognitive overload standpoint. Right, right. I get you on both fronts. Yeah, right. I mean, that's that's it for me is like I would in, in one scenario or two where I would like normally procrastinate, I've now forced myself to say, let me consult my genius golden retriever <laughs> <laughs> on acid uh, to help me because it's there waiting, willing and ready and provide it can do a, a mostly good job. I massage it on the final end, but like sure. it's done yeah. the 80%. I've done the 20% and I've moved along. You rinse, repeat that across a simple email response to a code refactor to a new vibe coded idea. And you've now continued to move. And that's, that's my, Probably my biggest fear is that the world won't respect what we respect, which is purity and, and greatness mm. in software development and this rigor that you guys talk about and this stability in our software is that the world almost wants more software faster. And now 
because that's progress. And at some point we'll have maybe global legacy crap, I guess, not even code at that point. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm kind of concerned about that a little bit. Sludge. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I don't know. To me, it's like fine. Like the more, it's good to have more software on the whole, and it's good to have more people creating software that meets their needs on the whole. And my sense, and we'll see, because like, I don't know, I can't predict the future, maybe the singularities tomorrow, but like my sense is that as a piece of software that maybe you started, you know, maybe it was your third vibe code result, like you charged $10 worth of tokens on three different LLM providers or whatever, and then vibe coded out the starting point. And you're like, great. I've now ch- chanced upon an amazing idea and you start iterating on it sooner or later, like for that, like if it's re- meeting real world demand and you're going to try to change it, my sense is sooner or later, you're going to under- want to understand the behavior of that system. And then you're right back to the same place we've always been in software, which is like the constraints on what we can build with software is not, you know, they're not, they're not analog constraints. That's right. certainly true. Right. Like, and they're also kind of not like even digital constraints in the sense that, sense that we could generate a ton of code now as well. But the constraints are, I think, still about controlling complexity, controlling the complexity of the system we're building, understanding the implications of what we've created. Um, I don't know. I mean, at some point, if AGI comes and I can like literally go to a web form and prompt it and say, mm-hmm. write me a fast collaborative code editor that supports AI really well and like out pops the binary, right. then cool. I guess we don't need to understand our software, <laughs> but until then, sadness, <laughs> right. sadness man, sadness. <laughs> Zed would be dead at that point. Zed would be, that would be a hobby. Gosh. It would be like a hobbyist tool, <laughs> like, like, right. like a, a Ford, like a Ford Model T or something. Yeah, right? somebody like, working on their old muscle cars or something. Yeah. I, I'm on the line of like, of this idea, like when you're in sales, you always think it's a numbers game or anything, really. Like if you're trying to grow a startup, it's a numbers game. The more opportunities you have, the more possibilities you get for a yes. Obviously, you get some no's too. But I feel like this is the ultimate numbers game increaser for everyone. Whereas you may have only had 10 results or 10 opportunities before. It's not that you have infinite, but you can iterate faster through ideation or things that may or may not be good ideas for the world. You know, right. much, much faster. You can test right. and experiment at such a rate and fail sooner too. Like don't waste so much time or right. find the thing that's actually got a thread to pull and you pull in that thread and you do what you've got to do to to take that next step. I feel like that's what's happening is like the ultimate numbers game increaser for everybody. Yeah. But overall, like, I don't know, my challenge to, to myself and everybody on my team and everybody is like the bar should be higher now. Like if we could, we ha- if we have this new technology that can like, automate tedious BS, mm-hmm. then we should have fewer excuses in a world where I can generate tests. Like, okay, not writing tests, not having a feedback loop on your software. Like, right. Come on now. Really? You don't have time to like generate the tests. Right. Right. So I think like the bar for all engineers needs to go up in terms for of the sure. quality of what we're building. Yeah. Yeah. The trade off has always been the value. Let's just take testing as one example of rigor like the value of those tests divided by the cost of those tests, right? Like that's what you decide, like, should I do this or not? Right, right. And it's it's been a hard sell even beyond the engineers, but like to the product owners or the boss or whoever, that it's worth that trade-off to them because all they see is like, we want progress, not toiling away. Progress. Yeah, like not just like <laughs> doggy paddling, not going anywhere. But as the cost approaches zero which is what's going to happen if, if we continue to make progress like this like the cost is going down towards zero it's not there yet right but if it gets down near zero then the value to cost calculation is like it's a no-brainer like you don't really have any reason right. not to just add the test suite because you didn't have to, to spend the time writing it maybe you had a glance at it and make sure it's not on acid and that's about right. it and in a world where you're spending i don't know 50 cents worth of compute you know choking on some error in your algorithmic code, the cost is going up of getting it wrong as well, you know?